This is probably the easiest way to trace a picture onto a canvas. I've got tracing paper, I trace the image onto the tracing paper and then on the back of the paper I coloured it in lead pencil. And then, in theory, all you do is go back over. Yes, I'm wearing my pyjamas. <laughs> it's a cold, cold weekend and my five-year-old sprained his ankle so we don't have any plans to do much because he can't walk I've got it blue tacked down see now I have mine on an angle because I have pugs and I just love it when they turn their head to the side they just don't they look cute <laughs> when they do it and I love it when mine do it they don't do it very often so you can have yours straight if you want but I wanted mine on an angle so I'm going to go ahead and put you on fast forward while I do this have some burnt sienna and some glazing liquid and I'm just going to do the outline of him just mainly in the burnt sienna for now Next step is to get a lot of um, glazing liquid or water and your burnt sienna and you're just going to do this coverage. This seals in the painting, the, the lines there. I'm just showing you a way just to keep your lines intact if you're not confident about doing it. So it's a very watery paint. So just use the burnt sienna and the water and make very watery paint to cover that in. The added bonus is it, it also gives you a background to start with, which um, it does show through in the painting. So you're going to get like a burnt sienna tone through your painting. I, I like doing paintings this way, I really do, especially for oil paintings. Okay, to begin with, I've got some yellow ochre and some, what did I use? That's raw umber. And then I mixed it together to make, just checking that you can see. I mixed it together to make this mustard baby poop color. <laughs> and that's the color that I'll be using for now, just for the base. And I, I'm using a filbert that you use whatever you want to use so we just go along using the mustard baby poop color along his whole face except for the dark areas I do accidentally go over one bit of dark area but that's fine this is just a, a base so an undertone underpainting so it doesn't have to be a perfect color I just wanted to get some color onto the canvas so just go around, leave his eyes and his ears and the little bits, his nose and the little bits that hang down from his nose, <laughs> you'll see the bits that I leave. But just try and leave the darker ones uncovered. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you do go over them, you just go over them with burnt umber, it really doesn't matter.
Okay, using burnt umber and a smaller paintbrush, I start in on the darker areas, like his ears, uh, the little droopy bits around his nose and under his nose. Now, I don't do his, I don't do the darkest areas for that. I'm going to save for black because, yeah, I, I want a darker tone than this this burnt umber. So go over the ears, go around the eyes, all these jowl thingies, whatever they are. They're not jowls. I don't know. <laughs> The nose, the, it's the part of the nose, the shadow on the nose. Go, so go over that, but leave the nostrils and leave the uh, pupils of the eye. Now he's looking really ugly. Uh, that's normal though. <laughs> Especially with acrylic paint, this is called the ugly stage and it goes all the way almost to the end. <laughs> Even when I'm painting and I think, uh, what have I done wrong? But when it's like this, it's fine. Just keep going and just need more layers. Now these ones, that line there is just one of the creases, which is a, a dark spot. I'll have it on the reference photo and um, on the Pinterest traceable that I have for you guys. But just go around, do some of the creases, don't do all of them. Now I'm just going to use some yellow ochre. Yellow I'm just using the yellow ochre or yellow oxide as a second coat along the whole pug's face. I don't worry too much about going over the burnt umber lines because I, yeah, they're just a guideline anyway. <laughs> it's a, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, they're just guidelines. But no, they are, they're guidelines and um, a couple of them I made a mistake with or I wasn't happy with where they were so I wanted to move them. But just go over the whole area except the big burnt umber spots with the yellow ochre. And there on the cheek, see how I'm going sideways? I'm trying to stick with the direction of the fur, which is, that's the way, that's the direction in which I use my paintbrush. So whichever way his fur is going to go, I paint that way. In the next part, I just grab burnt umber and I go over the bits that I wanted to keep there and I were just easier to go over with the yellow ochre. And that eyebrow there, I, or not eyebrow, but crease, I wanted a little higher and I also made a mistake with his nose there. Well, not a mistake, but I just wasn't happy with the way that it looked, so I changed it. So this next part here, I'm just using a combination of yellow ochre, like just there on the nose, and then also the burnt umber, just to go over the things that weren't quite right. By looking at the reference picture, I noticed that his chin had more brown on it. And I'm just going over all the burnt umber and the yellow ochre spots that I want to fix up. Now here I have some raw umber and some white and I just want to mix them to make a lighter brown. So about about that. 
understanding a little bit more of the raw rumba. What it just a little bit brown. Now what I'm actually doing with this uh, colour mixture is colouring or putting a base tone down for the shadows that's on the pug's face. So I'm looking at the reference picture and seeing where all the shadows are and well, pugs have wrinkly faces so they have lots of shadows. And that's where I'm putting this colour. So just follow along with what I do or look at the reference picture that I'm going to give you on Pinterest or the little picture that I'll insert at the top of the screen for you. And just go along and put this colour all over where the shadows are. Don't worry if you go over the burnt umber, you can always fix it up because there's a few spots there where I do and I just fix it up. Now believe me when I say it is a well-known fact that acrylic paintings and oil paintings too really do have a really ugly stage where you just don't know if you're doing right or wrong. So I'm still, I'm learning to paint, I'm still, I'm nowhere near any of the other um, artists they have on YouTube and, and I just thought that I would share what I do and my process with everyone else and the mistakes I make and how I fix them and how I go about changing things. But the moral of the story is acrylic paintings are ugly right up until they're not <laughs> so when you get to the end you'll look at it and you go oh wow I did that right so just keep going just keep layering and layering if you make a mistake it's easily fixed don't give up just keep going while I was doing this painting I was thinking oh my god what have I done this is this is horrible this is wrong I hate this and I was feeling that way because I haven't painted really in a couple of months and I've just I've just not let myself paint. And so I made myself paint this pug and I painted the pug because I have pugs and I love pugs. And so I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. And I really did hate this. I wanted to cry, I wanted to scream, but I kept going. And when I got to the end, I was actually quite happy with what I'd done. When you are completely happy that you've covered up all the shadows, um, right, what I'm doing here is blending that little bit in because it was a little bit too dark and I just wasn't happy with that. But yeah, like I was saying, when you are happy with your shadows that you've put in, it's it's the base, it's it's not the end, don't, don't panic. Go over with your burnt umber, any lines that you lost, and we will start adding in some of the creases at the top of his head because pugs have creases at the top of their head they do they have these little wrinkles in their skin my my girl pug she has massive creases skin folds so cute so like I said we're just filling in the top here the creases on the top of the head with burnt umber uh, just look at the reference picture or follow along with what I do So now using Mars Black or Carbon Black or whatever black you have, it's time to fill in the deepest, darkest shadows. So that will be the little crease that goes down from his nose to his mouth, his nostrils. Uh, I like to do the edging around the nose in black. And also his mouth has a little opening where it's black inside. So I do that with black as well. And then I just go through looking at the reference picture, looking for all the spots that are the darkest shadow. If you have trouble finding the darkest spots, um, do the reference picture and change it to black and white. And when you do that, you'll see the blacks and the whites in all the greys. And the bits that you want to do in black are obviously the black bits and bits that you want highlighted or extra, extra oomph added to it. I'm not a fan of using black, but it does it does add. Now up here, this is where the ear folds over. So there's going to be a dark shadow there and the ear that's on the bottom part is going to be darker as well. 
So now to blend in those uh, the harsh black lines that we just did, grab some burnt umber, or get some burnt umber, please. And while the black paint is wet, blend it into the bottom half of that ear to make the, the burnt umber and the black blend and make it a smoother thing, smoother blend. Here I just add some more black paint because my black paint was already dry. And then I get the burnt umber and go over the top, bottom, the bottom half of the black line that I just did and also the rest of his ear just to get another coat in there on the burnt umber. And that is how you blend the ears and make the bottom ear darker. And this whole time I didn't wash my brush so it had black and burnt umber mixed in with it and it just makes the blend more cohesive I guess you could say. Once you've blended the bottom half, go around the outer edges of the ears with black just to make the line a little bit stronger. Now the next step to make the top part of the ear look lighter and, and overhanging is to get a combination of burnt umber and titanium white. More burnt umber than titanium white because you still want it brown. You just want it lighter than the bottom part of the ear and just go over the whole top part of both of the ears with this new mixture. It doesn't matter if some of the black gets into that colour, it, yeah, it's just all blending really. Just don't get too much black in there. There's a little highlight on the edge of both of his ears, just use the same mixture but add more white to it to get this highlight there and we'll go over it again later on. Like I said, this is probably the second or third layer. We're gonna do another one or two. Now this is gonna look really stupid, but I'm just gonna get white and go over this bit here. Now using yellow ochre and white, start on the edge of his face to do the highlights and notice, like I said before, I'm going sideways because that's the way his fur will be going. So he has highlights on both sides of his face and a few other spots, but we'll start putting in the highlights now. So still using the yellow oxide and the white, or the yellow ochre and the white. Just work your way up and down the side of his face to get those highlights in and also go all the way up to the very top, up where his creases are, and we'll fill in the highlights where those creases are. Yellow oxide and yellow ochre are the same color. I just, from what I know, yellow ochre is the natural um, way of getting it, the natural, um, can't think of the word. I can never think of the word, you know. Yellow oxide is chemically produced. Now just keep going around his whole face basically, except for the bits that you have, the dark spots in. I do go over them a little bit because I'm wanting to blend them in. But while I'm doing this, I discovered that, because my, my original plan was to do lots of little hairs because I wanted it to be a hairy pug. But then while I'm doing this, I noticed that I didn't mind the texture of the way, the way that it looked with the texture of me just um, basically dabbing the paintbrush. And so I start dabbing the paintbrush and I start thinking, hey, I don't mind this. And so going along, I just dab across and then I'll actually start being more serious about the dabbing in a minute. And that's how we get the texture of the pug. So to do this dabbing, I just have a round brush and I'm just putting the paint on the brush and I just tap against the pug. This bit here is yellow ochre and titanium white just to get the highlights here and then as I move further down his face I'll do yellow ochre. So see how I'm just dabbing and I'm going over the um, dark, the shadows because I want to come back with burnt umber and blend them in with the dabbing technique. 
So all the rest that we did was fine. Uh, it added layers to it and layers of what makes uh, an acrylic painting not ugly. As you can see, he's still ugly. But this is, um, I really like the way that this turned out. Right here I'm using burnt umber and just dabbing across in the line and then I will get yellow ochre again and mix it in and that's how I end up doing all of the shadows. It's just building up the layers and making them dark but also blending it in with the yellow ochre so it looks natural. <laughs> 